Looking back at Ed, Ed and Eddie, the show had a lot of dark themes that are much easier to notice as an adult, and because of that, even though the show hasn't aired in nearly 15 years, fans are still continually coming up with fan theories, and as you can expect, some of these theories surrounding the cul-de-sac kids are truly dark and disturbing, and after checking out this one particular theory, you might never look at Ed, Ed and Eddie the same way ever again. So prepare to have your childhood ruined and all your darkest fears about the Ed boys brought to life. While many fans thought that Eddie and his two best friends friends were simply hustling their way through adolescence, it turns out that they might have been stuck in that loop for their entire lives. Actually, I mean, afterlife might be a better description, as this theory suggests that none of the lovable quirky kids from the cul-de-sac were even alive. Instead, they were trapped in an empty, endless purgatory represented by their circular dead-end road. Interestingly enough, though, the only group that wasn't considered by the theory to be dead were the Canker Sisters, but that's only because they might have played a much darker role in the series. Apparently, if you look at all the evidence behind this theory, it suggests that the three Canker Sisters might have been demons whose sole purpose was to torment those trapped in purgatory. The theory really is a simple one, but the deeper you dig into the nitty gritty of Ed, Ed, and Eddie, the more evidence pops up that could be used to support the idea. For the purgatory theory to work in the first place, you would have to look at a few things, like the reason why anyone would even think that these children are all dead, and on top of that, if they were dead, that doesn't necessarily mean purgatory. But believe it or not, there is still evidence that that possibly supports that too. First off, it's important to understand why those who created this theory believe that Ed, Double D, and Eddie, along with the rest of the cul-de-sac kids, were dead. The first indication that any of the kids who lived in the cul-de-sac weren't alive anymore is their character models. While they were obviously designed to look wacky, when you look at their abnormal skin tones and the strange green and blue colors that their tongues were, those were signs of deeper problems. It typically is anyways. And if you look up reasons why a person's tongue might be blue, you'll find out that when someone dies, and their heart can no longer pump blood throughout their bodies, their tongues turn a shade of blue. This means that the colors of their tongues would be a clear indication that the three Eds and the rest of the kids were actually dead the entire time. Now, according to the theory, another indication that all the kids were deceased was the fact that they were all dressed and acted as if they came from different time periods. And interestingly enough, there is actually a breakdown as to where all of them came from before they passed away. You see, according to the theory, Rolf was the first one to show up in the cul-de-sac despite him seeming like the newest addition. The creator of the theory claimed that Rolf possibly passed away around 1903 when his family first arrived at Peach Creek to start a farm. And considering how much Rolf cared for animals in the show, it's believed his death was caused by the farm animals trampling him during a stampede. The theory then goes on to explain that the next to show up was likely Johnny and his good friend Plank. Johnny supposedly died in 1922 after he was diagnosed with tuberculosis, which is why his character could be seen as looking sickly throughout the series. Whether it's true that the kids from the cul-de-sac were in purgatory or not, it's definitely sad to think about all these kids dying so young while still being forced to deal with their problems. But the theory continues with the next person to arrive being Eddie, a kid who grew up in New York City before moving to Peach Creek. Eddie was always a greedy kid and hustling to earn a buck. Sadly though, one of his scams went awry and after being chased down by disgruntled children, Eddie supposedly jumped into a nearby lake where he drowned as he tried to hide, which is just tragic. And then Ed and Sarah came next according to the theory and their family had a very unhappy life in the real world before it all came crumbling down when they were in a tragic car accident that claimed their lives. This is how the theory explains the presence of Sarah and Ed's parents in the series. Then Nas was the next kid to tragically end up in the cul-de-sac that the theory sees as purgatory. Nas is believed to have been born in the 60s as a flower child to two hippie parents, and at some point during the 70s, it's believed that a serial killer ended up in their neighborhood and took the poor girl's life. Then there was Ed, better known as Double D. The Brainiac was born in the 70s according to the theory, and he was supposedly gearing up to attend college at a very young age. However, it's believed that he was killed after one of his experiments caused an explosion that took his life. Now as the 1980s rolled around, the theory claims that Kevin was born into a broken home and shortly afterwards his mother passed away. Kevin always had to put on a tough persona and he acted out his frustration with the other kids to repress the anger that he felt towards the world. Sadly, the theory suggests that Kevin's death came at the hands of his abusive alcoholic father. And lastly, there was Jimmy a fragile child who was diagnosed with leukemia in the early 90s before his untimely death. 
and it was then that the purgatory known as the cul-de-sac was officially complete. Now, the theory does go on to mention the Canker sisters, and instead of being dead like the rest of the children, they were actually a trio of demons, believed to torment all of the remaining souls that hadn't been able to pass on yet. However, their strange attraction to the three Eds is still something that's unknown, but it's clear that, at least according to the purgatory theory, the Cankers were there for a likely sinister reason. Now, just because Eddie and his friends all might have been souls in the afterlife, that doesn't necessarily mean that they were in purgatory, though there is a bit of evidence that supports that idea too. Now, for those who don't have a good understanding of what exactly purgatory even is, according to historians, it originally became a central part of the Catholic religion around the late medieval era, though depictions of purgatory-like realms have been depicted all throughout history. Purgatory is typically described as a place where the souls of those who had sinned go to suffer and atone for the sins that they had committed. However, unlike the depictions of hell, souls that are trapped in purgatory can move on to heaven after they had been absolved of all sin. So to consider the idea that the kids in Ed, Ed, and Eddie were in purgatory, it's important to understand why they might not have been able to pass right on to their official afterlife. As mentioned before, all the kids in the cul-de-sac might have come from different decades throughout the 1900s according to this theory. Well, there's a chance that as each character showed up in purgatory, instead of atoning for their sins, they began to grow comfortable with one another and actually began leaning into the very quirks they were supposed to overcome. For instance, Eddie was supposed to learn not to be as greedy as he was in real life, at least according to the theory, but as soon as he clicked up with Ed and then later Double D, they all helped each other lean into their negative characteristics instead of growing, and while that might be sad, if this theory is to be true, it would be entirely plausible. If the kids had been dead for the entire series and were stuck in purgatory, it's likely that they all kept themselves there without even knowing it by simply being who they were at heart. The idea that they were spending their days in an endless purgatory also seems to make sense when you consider the fact that throughout the majority of the series, the kids seem to be in an endless cycle of summer vacation. In fact, even the episode Out with the Old, In with the Ed, in which the kids return to school, it's only the first day, and then immediately after that, the episodes go back to taking place during summer break. And while many viewers assume that Ed, Ed, and Eddie was simply a show that didn't follow a timeline, that could very well be a sign that they were stuck in the endless cycle known as purgatory. Now, it should be noted that there is some counter evidence that could prove the theory to be false, a lot of which indirectly came from the producer of the series, Danny Antonucci. The first thing that some people have disputed about the theory is the idea that the various colors of the characters' tongues imply that they had died. While the tongue does change color when blood stops being pumped to it, the producer gave a different reason for the varying colors. According to Danny, he had his own kids in the studio one day, and they were all eating different colored candies that stained their tongues, which inspired him to give each character a tongue that wasn't the standard color. And as for the children never really seeing their parents in the show, according to Antonucci, the parents weren't around much because it was summer vacation. Think back to when you were a kid running around outside during the summer. Most kids didn't have many interactions with parents throughout the day, so it made sense to keep parental figures out of the series for the most part. But what do you think about this disturbing theory? Is it possible that the cul-de-sac crew was stuck in purgatory throughout the entire series, or is that just a little too dark? Make sure you let us know in the comments below.